Hello friends. Um, today's lesson is about trying to make art that we're not so worried about the um, making things look perfect. A lot of times when we're working on stuff, we can get caught up in making things just right or just so. And um, so a lot of times I will do lessons that um, help to kind of break us from that and sort of enjoy the um the unknown and enjoy the um the imperfections and things so um it's i'm, I'm going to show a couple different ways to do it um with a few different materials based on what you might have at home so um i hope you enjoy this this activity uh asks us to use um uh, white construction paper now a lot of us might not have con white construction paper in the packs of construction paper, there's only a few sheets of white. Um, but I'm showing this with the white paper because it works the best. But I am going to show you um, a couple different papers that I know you'll have around the house to um, to use for this lesson. So I'm not going to use this whole thing. I'm going to actually break this up into fourths. So I'm going to show you how I tend to do this. Um, I will make a mark at... This paper is 12 inches long. I'm gonna make a mark at the six, because that's half of 12. And then with my ruler, I'm gonna line it up along there. And then holding the ruler down with my hand. Now I got two pieces. And now I'm gonna do this uh, here. I'm going to, um, this is nine inches long, so the middle of that is four and a half inches. I'm gonna do the same thing. And there we go. So we're gonna be using this size paper. So it's a, it's a nice manageable size and, uh, and it's gonna be great. So once we have our small piece of paper like this, we are going to carefully pick it up and then we are going to crumple it up. And then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put watercolor on here. We're gonna put three colors. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the outside of this. I want my paint to be, uh, you know, good and, good and wet, um, use a bunch of water, um, I, I like to, when I'm in my studio, I use a, a larger brush than what comes with, um, a watercolor kit. Um, and that's just, that's just my personal preference. You know, my hands are big. Uh, I like to try to get a bunch of color down in one, in one go, but it's, I, this, th this brush works just fine too. So then once I have a color, I am going to carefully, this is key, you gotta be careful with this. Carefully unroll it. The reason I say careful is because with wet paper, it's a lot easier to tear wet paper. So we're gonna try to be mindful of that. So I see that I have a bunch of color over here. And so I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna recrumple this, but I'm gonna try to get this area. So I'm not gonna fold it, I'm just gonna, you know, that looks good. I don't even need to clean off my brush. I'm just gonna to go to another color. Uh, let's use green this time. And there we go. Part of the fun in a lesson like this is the unknown, not knowing exactly what it's gonna look like once I um, unroll my paper. And you know, there's enough stuff in our lives that we have to try to be exact and precise about. A lesson like this helps us to enjoy the surprising, the un, the uh, the unsure, the unknowing, and you know, I, I like stuff like that. So again, carefully, I'm unrolling it. Now, two colors is good. I think max three. Let's just see what happens when I do three. I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna carefully, each time your paper gets wet, you gotta be a little bit more careful than the last time. Uh, just cause you don't wanna tear it. If you tear your paper, don't worry about it. Um, 
save it. Don't, uh, don't throw it out because we can always do stuff with it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And so here's my third and final color. And let's carefully undo this. Look at that. That's really cool. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my water out of the way. I'm going to just kind of carefully press this down on a table. And I'm going to let this dry. Um, it's not going to be as flat as when we started. It's going to have a little bit of uh, crumples and ruffles. But... That's kind of what we want in this. So um, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna let this dry completely. Um, I usually wait, you know, about an hour, um, but usually when I do something like this, I'll do a bunch of them and then I'll wait a day and we'll come back to it. I wanted to show you a, different, a couple different examples in the event that you don't have any white construction paper. Yesterday, I did this experiment where I used construction paper, newsprint, and plain white paper. Now they all look pretty similar. And uh, and I think that, the, that these are really, uh, really good alternatives, newsprint and plain white paper, in the event that you don't have any construction paper. Um, construction paper, you know, it's it's nice. Um, it, um, it crumples really well. That was pretty good. Newsprint, this is something that um, I say, you, you, can, you can buy newsprint in an art store, um, they might sell it at the dollar store, uh, Michael's, um, but I don't, I rarely buy newsprint anymore. What I do is when I, if I buy something at a store and they wrap it up in, um, you know, in big paper like this, uh, like maybe something breakable, I take it home and I, I, I lay it flat and I, I sort of press it down so that I can use it in, in art projects. Um, it's really nice. It holds the color really well. And uh, it crumpled really well. It's slightly thinner, but that's okay. This is probably um, what we a lot of us have. This is when I say plain white paper, I mean paper that you would use in like a copier. Um, it's a little bit. The color is a little bit different. If I hold this up, you can see if we look at those at those orange areas, um, like these, it's a little crisper over here. Some of you might really like that. Um, this, the, on the construction paper, it's, it's tends to sort of like, uh, blend into the paper a little bit more. Um, but they all, these all work really, really well. And so if you don't have white construction paper, newsprint works well, plain white paper, you can buy newsprint. Um, but again, if you were to buy, um, let's say like a picture frame that had, that was, um, that they wrapped it in in this newsprint paper. That's great. Another thing that works is that paper that they stuff in, in the, in the shoes, in the, in the toes of shoes. I take that out and then I, I, I lay it flat and then I can use it for something like this. So let's say you don't have any watercolor left at your house and you still want to do this lesson. Not a problem. I'm going to show you two different solutions to help you uh, do this lesson without watercolor paint. Um, the first one is to use food coloring. So, um, what I would do is, uh, in a, in a jar, I'm going to put a few drops of watercolor, not too, too much. And then a little bit of water, not a lot, right? And then you take your brush and you mix it around. One thing to be careful of with, um, uh, food coloring is you want to make sure that your area that you're working in is protected. Um, this, it doesn't, it's not permanent, but it can stain things. Like you'll have to wash your hands a little bit um, if you get it on your, um, if you get it on your hands. So I wanted to show you that I did this uh, with construction paper, with newsprint and plain white paper. It has really nice effects. Um, it does have a little bit of, uh, it, it makes like slight little rings. That's just the um, the dye in the in the food coloring, but th it works really really well. I I mean you wouldn't be able to know that this was food coloring uh, if I wouldn't have told you. Another alternative to watercolor would be to use uh, temper paint. Now what I did, I I, I want it to be you know kind of watered down again. So just like with the last ones, I put a little bit of paint and then a little bit of water. And then mix it around 
and it works really, really well. And again, I used, I did this before, uh, b before I started making this video, I did, this is um, temper paint on here, temper paint on construction paper, on newsprint, and on plain white paper. Again, you would not be able to tell a difference between the temper paint and watercolor. And I think it works really well on all three different kinds of paper. So let's talk about some cool things you can do with these papers once they're dry. Um, one thing that I like to do is take a look at this paper, um, you know, and each one is, is totally different. And, you know, it's a nice abstract, um, you know, kind of weird, totally cool design. So this might be a good time for me to use a marker and kind of look at some of these spaces and see if I can start to add my own designs to it. This is a nice, um, I like this sort of, thing because it um you know it's kind of like doodling but with um it, it, sometimes it's easier to do when it's not on um you know just totally white paper like there's something already down there and you know it's just it's kind of nice to it's almost like i'm having a conversation with all of the cool um, designs that happened when I painted this crumpled paper and it's just I don't I don't know I mean I never like when I start this sort of thing I don't exactly know what I'm doing but um, you know sometimes like in art we look for ways that we can sort of unwind and be super creative without totally explaining ourselves and that's what I like doing with this sort of thing. And, you know, I could, I, I could also like come up with, um, you know, like look at all of these shapes and see if I can find like images and stuff. Like, I don't know, this one is kind of, don't exactly know if I can find anything here, but maybe like when I've done this in the past, I found I've made shapes, you know, accidentally where they look like something. Like I did one and it looked like a cow. So I kind of made it into a cow. Or, um, you know, flowers are a good thing. I mean, it's sort of like when, you know, on, on a nice day when you're outside and, um, you know, you're sort of looking at the clouds and you're just like, oh, what's that? Is that, is that a mailman with a, with a cowboy hat on? Is that, uh, is that an eight-legged kangaroo? I don't know. I mean, these are just things. I mean, I'm assuming that you guys are just like me when you're outside and you're looking at the sky and there's some cool clouds. You're going to look at them and you're going to try to come up with pictures. This is essentially that. But I just, there's something really soothing and satisfying about this. This might be another, this would be a good family thing to do as well. Like after dinner, you pull out papers that you've made and then you pull out some markers and crayons and you say, all right, family, let's get to, let's get to drawing. Let's get our creativity on. And it's a pretty cool thing. And then when you're done, you can have a little gallery show and show all the cool things that your family made. So what can you do with these when you're all done? Um, I came up with a couple examples here. Um, one, I made a diorama and I used, I, I made this, um, uh, I made a really big sheet of this um, with a piece of newsprint to serve as a backdrop for some of my tube guys. Um, it's really good for photos or if you're doing stop motion, it's kind of nice to have uh, a pretty background. And I just made this out of, um, out of a shoebox, you know, just real easy peasy. Um, it's really good for, it's really good for photos and stop motion. Um, here is my finished um, abstract art piece with this. I really like this. I actually, so I, I put, um, I put it on a piece of uh, black construction paper and then I just kind of made a frame from the same, from the lid of this box. So that's kind of nice. It just kind of stands up. It's really good. Um, some fun things for you uh, in your house. If you have a small clipboard, 
it's really good for like note paper or as drawing paper. Um, if I wanted to do something like this, but I, you know, it's kind of nice to have like a, a little thing. And then you have like new, like old pieces of, or like, you know, not blank, but pieces that, that you can use for, um, for a drawing or for notes. If you don't have a little small clipboard, you can make your own. I just cut a piece of um, cardboard and I used a couple of binder clips and then I basically have a homemade clipboard. I really like this. It's really great. Um, you can also do something kind of like how we did with the marble paper where you uh, make a card and I just cut this out. Like, can you, like your mom, if she receives this, she's going to be like, I'm the luckiest mom in the world. It's awesome. Also, since uh, Thanksgiving is coming up and you might be having uh, dinner with your family, um, I made a couple of things uh, that you could use for your table. I made a, a place card um, that you could you could put these um, at each place um, where your family is sitting. What I did is I just, I took a note card and I folded it in half and I glued one of my papers onto it and I wrote my dad's name. Weird that my dad's name is dad. That's just how it is. Um, I also made a napkin ring and I used a piece of uh, paper towel uh, roll, like the, 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 the tube, and I glued, um, I glued this piece to it for a napkin. Look at that, it's pretty awesome. This is a really great way to, um, to make art in a cool abstract way where there isn't right or wrongs. It's really as creative as you can be.